integrated weed management, suppression. This is where we get a lot of issues from people that, uh, more so from the conventional growers than the home growers that are really, uh, they want to spray something. It's like, what can I go out and spray and kill? Uh, you know, from the organic, sustainable thing, there's not a lot of options that are out there. But what you really need to think about in this whole section is cultural methods. These are things that the uh, homeowners can do. Focus on the cultural methods. Optimize planting date, crop spacing, fertility, irrigation. Cultural methods are those things that will help the crop plant grow vigorously. The best weed control measures for the homeowner is a vigorous crop plant. You know, if you have a good pumpkin patch, those pumpkins are gonna shade out any weeds that are under there. I grow a lot of sweet potatoes for my research. I usually use one spray of Roundup between the row middles once, and I may go over top once with a graminicide to control any grasses that get through. So two sprays of an herbicide, and I don't have to do anything else other than maybe a little bit of cultivation because sweet potatoes, they're a very vigorous crop. They will shade out all the other weeds that would germinate under that. So I emphasize that for your growers. Crop rotation, cover cropping. Uh, I have my favorite cover crops that I like to use, and I think uh, they're very good. One that I like to use a lot actually is cereal rye. Not only does it provide physical suppression, provides a nice mulch when you kill it off in the spring, you also get a little biochemical suppression from that uh, because there are allelochemicals that are released that will inhibit the germination of small seeded broadleaf plants. Won't touch the grasses, won't touch the large seeded weeds or anything, uh, but it does suppress some of the small seeded things. Keep that in mind too that if they were going to plant a small seeded crop like carrots or something, it'll suppress the growth of the carrots as well. Some of some are fallow. I don't like to see fields left fallow too much because weeds will move in. But there are times where if you have a real bad problem, leave it fallow, cultivate, cultivate, cultivate in the summer. And sometimes you can do that to get things under control. Solarization, stale seed bed techniques. Uh, this character here, she's planting watermelons on black plastic. Black plastic is a great method for suppressing weeds. White plastic works very well if they use the white on black plastic. I had a grower once who put out gooseberries, the idea being they like it cooler, they like some reflection, but they just put plain white plastic and it wasn't black on the backside, so they had a huge flush of weeds underneath. Mulches, this was a system John Wilhoyt developed to unroll uh, round bales, an offset unroller. Uh, Mechanical methods, this is something new. We're gonna hear a little bit more about air propelled abrasive grip management. Frank Forcella with the USDA is doing this. Think of sandblasters. There's actually a little video clip I can send to you on this. Uh, this is a smaller scale. Sam Wortman at the University of Illinois developed this. Uh, the problem with this is it does take a lot of grit to do that, but that would be in organic management technique. Excellent publication. It's only available as a PDF now unless you can find it somewhere in a used bookstore. Uh, there's the website for it. Has a listing of all the different types of cultural steel type tools that are out there. Mechanical methods, small scale equipment, Gravely's. If you do recommend hose, I like hose. Thing to keep in mind with using hose, tell people to make sure it's sharp so they should have a file with them and recommend they spend the extra money and get a long handled variety. Saves the back. Mm -hmm. uh, solo backpack sprayers, weed wipers, flamers, uh, drip systems. They're actually quick connection systems that you can put together and hook onto that so you can hook up a four nozzle boom onto a solo backpack sprayer. Um, you can get CO2 sprayers and things. I do a lot of stuff with a four nozzle backpack sprayer myself. These are some of the things that are more for your larger scale uh, market gardeners. Uh, weed badger, it's basically a spinning fingers that come in. You'll see this used in orchard situations or blueberries and things like that. Multivator, multi-head renovators, see that in strawberries. Emphasize the label is the law if they're going to use chemical methods. 
the right chemical at the right rate with the right equipment, uh, right timing, rotating modes of action is critical. Uh, limited options for organic systems, they're non-selective, they're non-residual, typically better on broadleaf weeds. Uh, you're basically, you've got corn gluten meal that has some pre-emergent activity, uh, and otherwise you've got things like vinegars, uh, citrus oils, and things like that. That they work, I mean, they're okay if somebody wants to go with an organic herbicide, there are things out there that they can use. Uh, but uh, again, they're non-selective, non-residual typically, and they're just not as effective as some of our other ones. The key points that I want you to emphasize though are understand the biology, use an integrated management approach, cultural methods are going to be key for your growers, mechanical methods, there's not a weed that's developed resistance to being ripped out of the ground yet, uh, timeliness is critical, um, and that's all I had.